Hi guys, Victoria who sit here with VK Consulting. And today let's talk about employee retention credit. And you probably, if you have a company, you probably have been contacted by numerous organizations that uh, saying they can give you so much money back if you just file this form and amend your returns and your IRS will pay you all this money back. So today let's actually look at it if it's really true and um, can you do it yourself? Because quite frankly, if you're a small business, you cannot really afford to pay five, ten thousand dollars in this form preparation. The forms are not really difficult, but you kind of need to do certain calculation to figure out if it works for you. Because basically you need to amend your form 941. Uh, that's a quarterly form that you submit to IRS for a specific period you're going to claim the credit. And then if you are eligible for the credit and you're going to get the credit, you need to amend your tax return. So think about it. You filed your 2020 business tax return and your 2021 business tax return and you claim X amount of uh, deductions regarding your payroll. Now you amended those forms, so you need to amend your tax return. And on your tax return, you're going to have less payroll deductions. So your bottom line is going to be more resulting in a tax liability that you need to pay back to IRS. And because it's, let's just say, 2020, it's been like two years later, there will be penalties and interest, it's not going to be a big amount, but there still will be amounts on top of your balance due. So before you go into all this, uh, kind of see if it works for you, are you going to be ended up paying more than you're actually getting back in credits. These credits are more for the companies that have a big payroll, they have a lot of employees, they paying um, like $10,000 a month in payroll to their employees. And another thing, it cannot be you. If you are a sole owner or if you are on you're the owner and you are on a payroll, this credit does not relate to you. You cannot take this credit against yourself. You cannot take this credit against any employee who's related to you, like your wife or your child or your relative. It has to be independent from you, employees who work in your business. So there is a lot of what if and ifs uh, to consider before you actually start working on this credit. However, if you do want to do it, um, let's look at the forms that you need to do. To start up, you need a worksheet that will help you to figure out all your numbers. So let's look at this worksheet together. So this is worksheet. It's called worksheet number one, credit for qualified sick and family leave wages and the employee retention credit. There is online two different forms. They call the same worksheet one, but one is credit for qualified sick and family leave and wages only. And it has step one and step two. For this credit, retention credit, you need forms that have step three. This form is pretty self-explanatory. You're going to fill out step one and step three, unless you did have a sick and family leave credit during that quarter. But um, again, um, read through it. I will not focus on the step two. I will just explain how the step one and step three work. To start, pull out your form 941, the one that you filled out for quarter 2, 3, or 4 for year 2020, or 1, 2, and 3 for year 2021. And you just go line by line, and it's pretty easy. Enter the amount of Social Security tax from form 941, line 5A, column 2. You enter it here. Then enter from line B, 5B, if you have any amounts there. You add them and you divide them by 50%. And you just follow. Majority of people going to have 
just this line 1a, line 1c, and 1d. Then you can come to line 1l. And usually 1l is the same number as in 1d. And you're skipping to step two, and you go to step three. And you figure out now your employee retention credit. Remember how I said that your qualified wages are not yours, your spouse, your child, and any person who relates to you. It's just your employees. So let's just say you have a company that has five employees. It's you and your spouse and three employees. So you're going to deduct you. You're not going to count yourself or your spouse. You're just going to look at your employees. And let's just say that you have a very successful company and you're paying $20,000 a month for each employee. Right here in 3A, you can add only $30,000 because qualified wages only up to $10,000 per employee, per quarter. So even if you pay per quarter $60,000 per employee, you can put only $10,000 per quarter per employee here. So you 10000 times three employees, $30,000. Now, let's just say your employee is making not so much. They are not full-time, some part-time, and they make a quarter, $5,000, so each. So you would put five times three, $15,000. Remember again, qualified wages per quarter per employee up to $10,000. Do not exceed $10,000. And obviously, if your employee is making less than $10,000, you put in their number whatever is the salary. Then you go to line 3D and you will multiply your qualified wages. Let's just say it's $30,000 by 50%. 50% credit is for year 2020. For year 2021, percentage went to 70%. Again, remember you can use the same worksheet for both years, because this worksheet you don't submit anywhere, you're just using it for your personal calculation. But remember, for 2020, it's 50%, and for 2021, it's 70%. And you would calculate the credit and then just follow again all the steps. You will take, let's just say we had 30,000 in qualified wages, 50% is 15,000, and you out of 15,000, you would deduct uh, the numbers that you have in 1L. That's 50% of your social security that you calculated in step one. Now you have two numbers. You have 50% of your social security, you have $30,000 in your qualified wages, and you have a difference between two. What do you do with these numbers? Let's look together. And for this, let's look at form 941X. When you come to IRS website, they have prior year form and instructions because you need to make sure you file in a correct year. So let's just say you are filing year, year 2021. You click on a form and it gives you a form 941X. And again, you're gonna fill out, put your information here. You're going to click on 941. You're going to pick whichever quarter you're doing. So let's just say you're doing quarter one. You're going to put year 2021. And you're going to put months and date when you discover an error. And I understand this is not an error. You're just adjusting your tax return. So if you're doing it today, you're going to do 11, 0, 2, 2022. You want to do a claim. You would certify, and then you will click on skip. Again, on top, you would put your company. You would put quarter one, year 2021. Don't forget your company name, your employer tax ID. 
So all these numbers, there is a lot of numbers here because this form is made for any purpose you want to amend your form 941. For the retention credit, we are interested in line 18A. So right here, you would put half of your social security, that number in 1L. Let's just say, just for the purpose of it, it's $6,500. In the second column, you're going to put zero. And then again, you're going to put 65. And in the last column, you're going to put minus 65. Then you would go to the part three, 23. You combine and you put minus 65, the same number. This line that we are interested in is line 26A, a refundable portion of employee retention credit. And right here, you would put the difference. So difference between 15,000 and 6,500, $8,500. And again, it's zero, it's 85, and it's negative 85. I hope I did my math <laughs> quickly and correct. And when you combine both numbers, you should have half of your qualified wages which just for easy example, it was $10,000. Now you go to line 30, which is says your qualified wages. And we had 30, zero here, and 30,000 right here. You don't fill out anything else. Just right here, you would explain that you're filing this form to claim your employee retention credit. Again, as you see, this is not a difficult form. There is a lot of questions on this form that has nothing to do with claiming employee retention credit. You do need a worksheet for easy calculation. And, you know, I would suggest before you even start doing it, you need to read and watch a little bit more videos and read the articles regarding actual credit because IRS does put certain qualification. Who can claim this credit? You need to compare your 2020 to 2019. You need to compare sales receipts. You need to compare your sales receipts from 2021 to 2020 each month to figure out when you start claiming credit did you had 50% drop in sales receipts? So this video, we're not going into discussion what's a qualification. We're just looking at the form. Like once you came to a conclusion that you qualified, have to fill out this form. I hope this was useful. And if you do decide to fill out this form, you now know how to do it. Good luck. And... Um, don't forget to subscribe.